Okay, grab yourself a cuppa. This is gonna take a minute. Hi, welcome to my workshop. My name's Darren and this is 3D Princeton workshop number 18. Something a little bit different for you today. We're gonna to take a look at 3D printers themselves. Now, by now, of course, a lot of you will have watched 3D printer videos, perhaps even some of my own, and you might be considering buying a 3D printer. So what should you get? With so many 3D printers to choose from, how do you know which one to get? Well, rather than me tell you which specific one to buy or do a specific review on a specific printer. We're going to look at the three printers I've got, the pros and cons, or if you like, the strengths and the weaknesses of each printer, and what you should be looking for when you go and buy a printer of your own. And hopefully that way brand won't matter, you'll know the features you're after and be able to make an educated decision. Now, because you're watching this channel, I'm going to make the wild assumption that you want to print things for use around your workshop. After all, that's what this is all about, 3D printers for the workshop. So we're going to rule out the SLA printers. Not that I've ever used one, and I really don't want to, they look very unhealthy, but mainly we're ruling those out because they've got such small print volumes, and we want to print things decent sizes here. That's kind of the point. I'm also going to assume you don't want to spend about $3,000 or more on your first printer, so we're going to rule out those printers that do metals. They're expensive which basically leaves us with the FDM, or Fusion Deposition Modeling, sometimes manufacturing, but FDM printers, uh, the ones that use the plastic filament. So just to be perfectly clear, this isn't sponsored. I don't want you to buy a specific printer. I'm gonna show you the printers I've got. I'm gonna tell you how great they are or how crappy they are at various different points. But that's just so if you get an idea of the features and what you might need, as opposed to, hey, buy this printer. So first thing, just to clear up, you might be thinking of buying a kit, a kit printer you can put together yourself and save a bit of money. I've just done that myself. I've just built myself a Prusa Mini from a box of spares, basically, or a box of parts. It was very rewarding, but it took a couple of days. So if this is your first printer, I recommend against building one from scratch. I recommend you buy a complete unit. That way you get it out of the box. You might have to do a small calibration. You may have to put the head in the unit or join the Z or upright axis to the base, but that'll be it. It'll be fairly simple and you'll be up and printing the same day. If you're looking for a second printer, then yeah, get a kit, save some money, and uh, the joy of putting one together, it was like being a little kid again. It was like a jigsaw puzzle on steroids. It was awesome. So yeah, absolutely. If you look at a second printer, by all means, buy a kit. Now, because of the lack of space and the excess of dust, I don't keep my 3D printers down here in the actual workshop. I keep them up in the house. So let's nip up to the house and play 3D printers. Let's start off by just introducing you to the ladies. On the left over here that's currently running is the Prusa i3 Mark III, uh, not the Mark S. But on the right over there is the Prusa Mini Plus. So that's the latest of those. And that's the one I built myself that I was telling you about the other day. It was such a thrill when it all worked, uh, which it did without any real effort. I'm very pleased with it. And in the opposite corner, weighing in at around 20 kilograms, is the Flashforge Creator Pro dual head printer. The first big difference you'll notice with the Creator Pro compared to the previous two printers is the fact that this one's enclosed. Enclosures are good for filaments such as ABS, PETG and ASA because it keeps the temperature around the part more consistent as it's being printed and can help reduce warping. Now having said that about the joy of an enclosure, I hardly ever use ABS. It's not pleasant to print with. Likewise with the Flex, you also see I've got some bamboo filament up here. I avoid that at all costs, that's a horror. I hardly ever use ABS anyway, that's why it's on the top shelf. And the reason PETG is on the shelf just down from that is because I avoid using that as well. I use PLA Plus mostly, and uh, it's sturdy stuff, it's quite strong. I don't have a need for the extra strength of ABS. Occasionally, for something more wear resistant, I'll use PETG, 
So uh, you may remember I've done a video on some stencils for routers or some templates for routers. Uh, from now on, whenever I do one of those, I'm going to try and do it in PETG because that's more wear resistant. You'll see here there's two different colours of plastic. This is a PLA Plus and this is just a regular PLA, two different manufacturers. And the PLA Plus was about the same price and it's just printed so much more nicely than the straight PLA. Be very careful where you buy your filament from. And when you find somewhere you like, at a price you like, keep using them. I had to buy this on Amazon because my normal supplier was out of filament. They'd run out <laughs> of all but about three colors. So yeah, I had to buy this on Amazon. It cost me slightly more and the quality is nowhere near as good. There are big differences between different brands of filament. Some people tell you there isn't but there are, so look out for crap. When you look at the specifications for a 3D printer online, one of the things you'll see is the size of the build plate. And uh, it's all well and good to look at them and go, okay, yeah, that one's 200, do I need 200 by 200? What size do I really need? But to see them physically compared can really help. So, that's the size of the Prusa Mark III build plate. Uh, the real principal area is about 210 by 240, that's maximum. The plate is bigger than that, but if you start printing much bigger than that, it'll curl up at the edges, or at least that's been my experience. So really 210 by 240 is as big as you're gonna go on that fella. This is the Prusa Mini, and its principal area is 181 and 80, but I would say really in reality, you're probably looking at 175 by 175. Again, I don't think it'd be wise to print right up to the edge. And then this is the build plate of the Flash Forge. But again, I'm gonna say 220 by probably 140 is the biggest you'd build on that. That's certainly the biggest I've been willing to try. And even then I've had a little bit of curling at the edges. Now, another thing we'll, with build plates is whether or not they're removable. Technically, this isn't actually a build plate. This is a sticker for a build plate, but of course it's the same size. So it was good to use for the comparison. The Flash Forge doesn't have a removable build plate. You've got the stickers and you've got to scrape things off with a spatula, which means very, very thin prints bend and curl up when you remove them. In comparison, both of the Prusa printers have removable build plates. And when you take them off the 3D printer, you can give them a little flex and the print just pops straight off. Nice and easy. There we go, the print on the Mini has finished and here's the advantage of a removable bed. Okay, all I have to do is just lift the build plate off. And that's it, <laughs> done. So here I can show you two things that really suck at once. One is no filament run out sensor. The purple filament actually snapped. It used what it had left in the printhead and that's it. It just kept printing thin air after that. So wasted print because the filament sensor doesn't exist on this machine. I've had to re-record the audio here because the Instamic once again let me down and corrupted the audio. So here what's happening is I'm trying to remove the print from the print bed using a spatula. And as you can see, this one was particularly difficult. Uh, another argument for a flexible, removable build plate. Now there's a couple of different systems for extrusion. Extrusion being the way it basically forces the plastic out through the nozzle. And in all cases, of course, we have a stepper motor attached to a toothed gear that pulls the filament through and drives it in through the nozzle. But in some cases, they're mounted directly onto the printhead, as is the case here with the Prusa, and is also the case with the Creator Pro. You can see it's a direct drive unit. Well, you probably can't really, because there's fans in the way. But these tubes, which are not Bowden tubes <laughs> in this case, they're just guides for the filament. In fact, if I pull one of those off, you can see the filament. There's a piece of filament going in there and it's actually driven by the stepper motor here. And you can see here, there's a little piece of the same plastic coming out of the nozzle. 
and that is effectively the print head. By comparison, the Prusa Mini has what's called a Bowden drive system. So the head here doesn't have the weight of a motor on it for extrusion. Instead, the filament is fed to the head through this tube, a Bowden tube, from an extrusion motor at the back of the unit. Let me turn it around and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Around the back of the Prusa Mini, you can see here, this is the actual extrusion motor. It drives a toothed gear inside the housing here, which pushes the filament up through a Bowden tube, hence the name, and down into the head and uh, out through the heated nozzle. And the great thing about that is it takes the weight off the head. We don't have to have a vertical support on this side like the other two printers because it's not supporting anywhere near as much weight without the weight of the stepper motor. The downside is it's very hard to print very flexible filaments through a Bowden tube. I haven't actually tried it on this printer. Uh, I did on my first, which was a Bowden drive system. Uh, that was a piece of shit, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, this is much better. This is a good little printer. But trying to push a flexible filament through a tube here is basically like trying to push a rope. You'll notice further down here, this little piece hanging off. And that's because on the Prusa Mini, the filament runout sensor is here. It's an optional extra and it sort of hangs off. I thought that would be a bit weird, but actually, no, it, it works really well, really well. I'm quite happy with it. Over on the Prusa Mark III, the filament sensor is actually inside the head of the unit. But again, very handy to have. You don't want to be without a sensor. By contrast, the FlashForge Creator Pro here doesn't have a filament sensor. So if filament runs out, it just keeps printing thin air and can leave you with prints unfinished like this. Just. You can see the infill pattern and it just stopped. The printer went for the duration of the print, uh, printing it up into the thin air with nothing coming out. And of course I was unable to complete this because where do you start from? You've, you've basically got to start again from scratch with new filament. So that's why I would recommend a filament runout sensor. Having a dual head printer is great for doing prints like this without having to stop and change the filament over within the printer. But sadly, my particular dual head printer is no good for things like this because they're too small. And when you go to take them off the print bed because you've got to scrape them off, they just curl right up and uh, kind of useless after that. The FlashForge Creator Pro uses SD cards which fit into a slot just inside of the front door here. So it slides in just there, right behind the front panel. And the front panel has a monochrome display and a five button input. On the Prusa i3 Mark III we use SD cards and they slide into the side of the display just here. Like so, you can see it's just looking at it there. And we have a button slash knob for control. So if I press that, we rotate the knob to pick what we want. And press the button to select it. Perhaps not as fancy as the five button input, but it works and it works well. The Prusa Mini uses USB sticks, which plug in at the back of the unit. This is the one it comes with. The Prusa Mini has this lovely color display. And again, it's got a knob with a button. But the great thing about this display is we hit the print and we select something to print. You can see it gives us a little picture of what we're about to print. And that's really handy if you've got a heap of different things on your USB stick or worse, a couple of things with very similar names and you're not sure which one's which. Being able to see this is excellent. It really is. One thing to keep in mind with a 3D printer is the noise it makes as it prints as well because uh, obviously you've got to live near this thing even if it is in a different room. I think the Prusa Mini is the quietest and the Creator Pro is the loudest. All three printers produce much the same sort of quality when it comes to prints. This one was done on the i3 Mark III, the Prusa. This one was done on the FlashForge Creator Pro. And this one was done on the Mini, on the Prusa Mini. I've actually noticed that you get more of a difference depending on the quality of the filament you use rather than the machine itself. All three of these were done in the fast mode or 0.2 millimeters roughly. So all three will give finer results than this. But hey, these are just tubs for holding things, so print them quick, I say. Okay, so here's a bit of a table of the different features. Let's just run down through them. So build volume. 
Obviously you want as big a build volume as you can get. For me that's the Prusa Mark III. If you can go, if you can afford something even bigger, by all means. The bigger your print volume, the less you'll have to divide things down into smaller parts when you want to build big projects. That really is a plus. Extruder, Direct Drive or Bowden, uh, I, think, I think Direct Drive is better. That said, I've not any problems with the Mini so far with its Bowden tube. But my very first printer, the XYZ, also had a Bowden and that ran into a few issues with softer filaments. Okay, display and input selector. It doesn't really matter, with the exception of the Prusa Mini being able to show you what you're about to print. That's a real bonus. Input media, SD card or USB, it really doesn't matter. What we really want is Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi would stop you going backwards and forwards between computer and printers, and save you a lot of time. None of these machines have Wi-Fi, uh, but if you're looking for a machine, that's certainly something worth having. Now, here's the big one, removable build plate. Do yourself a favour, get a removable build plate, get something with a flexible build plate so you can just pop the prints right off. Don't mess around with spatulas. You will swear. <laughs> you will say rude words. Number of print heads. Well, when I bought the Flash Forge Creator Pro, I was really keen to do a lot with it with the dual print head, uh, certainly a lot of labels. Unfortunately, it won't do the thinner prints because of the non-removable, <laughs> non-flexible print bed. So when you try to peel labels off, it damages them. For larger color prints, I'm sure it will be fine. Um, I just haven't done any yet. But do you need a dual head printer? I honestly don't think so. I think for most things that you will do, Certainly around the workshop, a single head printer is plenty. It's not often you've got to do a two color thing. And if you do, you can just get one of the printers like the Prusa where you just stop it and change filament and start again. It's uh, it all done in software. It's not a hassle, it's very easy. Enclosure, do you need one? Uh, it's again, it's nice. It's good if, if you're gonna do a lot of ABS, a lot of ASA, I would say yes. If you're doing PLA, PLA Plus and PETG, you can get by without it quite easily. And quite honestly, I think they're going to be the filaments you'll use the most. Of course, I don't know you. You may have different needs. Noise level. Go for something as quiet as you can. I've found with the Flash Forge, I can shut the door, go to a different room and still hear it. Now, that's not the case with the Mini. And even the Prusa i3 is significantly quieter. So I would go towards a quieter machine where possible. Now, the print quality we've just seen, and it's much the same on all of them. Now I've got delivery speed here, and you'll see next to the Prusas I've said pre-order required. And you do, you have to order a Prusa long in advance. Uh, it took me four months to get my Mini. I ordered it on the 1st of January, and I got it in April. Whereas when I ordered the Flash Forge, I got it within a week from Amazon. Filament runout sensor. Seriously, this is up there with the flexible removable build plate. Do yourself a favor, get something with a filament runout sensor. And you don't have to run out of filament on the spool for it to be an issue. Your filament can snap, it can get stuck, all sorts of things can happen. And it's just nice that it'll stop and let you know if there's an issue like the Prusas do. Not having that is such a pain. I've had several things fail because of that. So in my personal opinion, the three most important things to look for are build volume, go as large as you can afford. Filament sensor, get one. You will swear if you don't. <laughs> Removable build plate, same, same, get one. You do not want a fixed build plate that you can't take out of the machine. Again, you will swear if you don't. <laughs> Well, that brings us to the end and if you've made it this far well done that was a, a long somewhat dry video i have to admit but i think all the important information is in there and it should help you make an informed decision so i do hope this has been of some help to you have a great day i will catch you in the next video and bye for now